What's going on guys? Welcome back and welcome to the final workout of week one. So today we're just going to be hitting our shoulders and then a little bit of direct upper trap work. So today's going to be our highest uh, rep day in terms of a lot of our movements like our pressing and some of our, our like lateral raises and things like that. So let's get into it. So first thing first, we're going to start off again with some seated dumbbell overhead press. We're going to do four sets of 15 reps per set at an 8 RPE for all sets. Um, so like I said, this is our highest rep day for this exercise. And, um, you know, it's, it's important to, this is kind of where it, it becomes important to really, you know, pay attention to that RPE scale and trying to keep things, um, you know, we're aiming for an eight, so trying to keep things two reps away from failure, just because, you know, 48 hours from now, again, you know, we're gonna be doing our, our heavier pressing day. Um, we'll actually be pressing a little bit heavier than last week. And so we don't wanna push it too hard today with these with these higher, higher rep sets and impact our performance for the next workout. So, you know, we need to try our best to aim for that that 8 RPE for all of our sets. Um, after this, we'll just move on to some line incline dumbbell lateral raises. This movement's probably new to a lot of you guys out there. Um, I just really like incorporating it into, or at least a, a, a variation of an exercise like this um, into my programs because it places tension on your lateral delts at a different point in the range of motion. So if you think about when you do standing dumbbell lateral raises like we did um, the other two days, at the bottom of the, the rep, um, when the dumbbell is down by your side, there's not a lot of tension on your on your lateral delt. It's pretty much you know just gravity pulling your arm straight down. And the tension really only starts to happen kind of towards that topper, uh, towards that upper part of the range of motion. So by doing this variation where we're lying down, um, it actually places tension closer to the bottom of the range of motion. So when our when our delt is is in a more lengthened position, so it just it just targets the the uh, the muscle a little bit differently in a different part of the range of motion. Um, so essentially, what you'll do is just set the incline bench to I want to say it's about 35 to 40 ish degrees here. Um, it was kind of hard to, I tried to get you guys the best angle I could. Um, I wasn't able to get anyone to record it, so there was not a lot of panning, but I tried to give you guys um, at least, you know, one or two different angles where you could see kind of what was going on. Um, oh, and for this exercise, you know, we'll do um, four sets of 10 to 15 reps per set. The first three sets will be at an 8 RPE, and the last set will be at a 10 RPE, so taking that last set to failure. Um, or, or capping it at 15 reps, whichever one comes first. Um, but yeah, so set the bench to 35 to 40 degrees, lay down kind of like I'm doing here. Um, and also, I'm gonna indicate kind of what we're trying to do, um, but it's really a limited range of motion. As you'll see, it's just this, this little tiny um, arc that I'm doing. And the key, what we're looking to do is, from the very beginning when we, when we contract our, our delt, we want to focus on just moving and just, you know, keep our keep our elbows fixed, keep our wrists fixed, and just think about raising our arm, raising our humerus, and contracting that lateral delt. And we're actually at the top of the range of motion. We're trying to get that to be parallel with the floor. Um, and I'll kind of indicate that, like I said, with my fingers, kind of what you want to be parallel with the floor once you get the dumbbell raised up. Um, but really. You just raise it up until it's about, you know, even with your shoulders, and then kind of pause briefly at the top, and then slowly lower it back down. Um, it'll take you guys probably a little while to get used to it. Um, it's kind of a, a funky movement, and it just, it just takes a little bit of practice um, to get used to. And it really doesn't require a lot of weight to to target the muscle, um, because if it just it puts tension directly where you want it once you kind of get used to that range of motion. Um, and I'll go through, we'll keep breaking down this exercise as we kind of go along, um, just because it is one of the more complicated ones. But if you need to play around with, you know, one or two warm-up sets even prior to, you know, the four working sets, you know, feel free to do that just so you can get some more practice at kind of 
playing around um, with with this new exercise. And then after this, we'll move on to some just some standing dumbbell shrugs. We'll do three sets of 15 reps. We'll do an 8 RPE for the first two sets and then a 10 RPE for the last set. Um, I just, I believe I only got one uh, clip here. The gym was pretty crowded, so I actually had to move outside. And actually, this isn't even a full a full set. This was just like a bonus uh, fourth set because I wasn't able to get the first, the actual working sets filmed. So I kind of just did like a little mini set here. But really what we're looking for is just full full range of motion. So keeping everything stationary and thinking about bringing your shoulders up towards your ears, getting a good squeeze and pausing at the top when your traps are fully contracted, and then slowly lowering them back down, the dumbbells back down, feeling your traps lengthen. Um, and you can even pause just for a second at the bottom or a half a second just to get a good stretch and then contract and initiate that next rep by shrugging up and bringing your shoulders towards your ears. And then after this, we're gonna do, it's it's similar to what we just did, um, except it requires quite a bit less less weight, especially since your uh, upper traps are already gonna be pretty fatigued from the previous exercise. But all you'll do, like I did, um, you know, one set with 45 pound plates and one set with 35 pound plates, but they're, they're plate shrugs. Um, and we're just gonna do two sets of 15 reps at an eight to nine RPE for both sets. But all you'll do is you'll grab the plates and you'll lean forward just a little bit slightly like I'm doing here. So that way when you shrug the plates up, you're not only able to elevate your scapulas, elevate your shoulder blades, but you're also able to retract them a little bit. Um, you know, and hopefully you can kind of see this in the video what I'm doing here, but versus just the, the previous exercise where we were just standing and pretty much shrugging the dumbbell straight up here we're actually able to ele like shrug the dumbbells up, so elevate our scapulas plus retract them a little bit. Um, like I said, this will take a lot less weight. Like um, like I said, you might even start off with 25s uh, to 35s, depending on you know how if this is is, is new for you um, or if you know you're you're weak in this range of motion. And then after this, we'll move on to some lying dumbbell weird out rows. We're going to do four sets of 10 to 15 reps each set. The first three sets will be at an 8 RPE, and then the last set will be at a 10 RPE. Um, this is probably one of my favorite exercises for kind of isolating the rear delts. Um, and, and some of these angles are a, a bit misleading, but just some, some cues for when you do this is you want to, throughout the entire range of motion, you want to really think about pulling up through your elbows so pulling up through your elbows and keeping your scapulas pretty stationary so not not squeezing you don't want to squeeze your shoulder blades you know squeeze your scapulas together at the top because that's incorporating other muscles all we're trying to do is really just target our posterior you know the posterior head of our deltoid so you really just want to think about just using your delts uh, to perform the exercise um, try to keep it's difficult especially as you start to fatigue you'll see it in some of my later reps here but um, you, you want to keep your wrists aligned over your elbows and kind of keep those dumbbells out as you as you contract and perform the rep because it gets as you start to get more fatigued it gets easier to kind of let the the dumbbells come in uh, close to your body where you know the, we want to keep them kind of out to our sides um, And then also that with the angle it's a little misleading But it might look like I'm like my elbows are close down by my sides, but they're actually pretty far out um, They're not you know, they're not uh, Perpendicular to my torso, so I don't have like a perfect T But I'd say I'm about you know, maybe 60 degrees away from my side as I'm performing this exercise and all it is is finding um, finding a an angle which allows you to put maximum tension on that posterior head of your delt while minimizing the involvement of your lats um, and other muscles. So again, keeping the elbows and the arms out from your sides and then keeping the wrists aligned over your elbows. And then all we're going to do after this is just finish off with some cable external rotations. And this is more of a um, preventative exercise just to target some of those smaller weaker muscles um, two of our rotator cuff muscles that 
often get neglected because there's not a lot of exercises we do that actually, you know, rotate our, our humerus to the outside of our body. So as you see what I'm doing here, um, and I guess, you know, we're going to do three sets of 10 to 15 reps and we'll do an eight to nine RPE for all sets. But as you'll see, what I'm doing is, is really, it's just, um, you know, your, your arms at a 90 degree angle. You, all you're trying to do is almost imagine that there is a, a stake being drove down through your arm, through your elbow attached to the floor. And all you're trying to do is just rotate your elbow around that stick. So the range of motion is not very, it's, it's pretty small actually. All it is is, is how far you can rotate uh, your arm out to the side without lifting it up. Um, you know, we're not trying to turn this into a lateral raise um, or anything like that. All we're trying to do is, is, is rotate um, our elbow and our arm. So like I said, imagining that it's on a stick and contracting until, you know, we've, we've fully rotated um, and then lowering it back down and just keeping constant tension. And these muscles, just so you kind of know what, where you're wanting to feel this at, they're kind of along your upper back. Um, you know, you'll feel this a little bit in the post of your head, your delt as well, but really focus on almost you'll feel them a little bit in your upper back, kind of around your scapulas is where you'll be feeling, uh, is where, you, you know, you should be feeling this exercise. All right, so I just finished our shoulder workout. It honestly is pretty quick. It took me like maybe an hour and 10 minutes to complete it. It's honestly pretty simple. Just some presses, a little bit of, you know, incline lateral raises, some rear delt rows, a little bit of stuff for our upper trap and some stuff for our external rotator cuff muscles. But honestly, it goes by pretty quick. Um, I'll be sure to link and, well not link, but I'll put the entire workout in the description box below. So check that out. If you guys have any questions, as always, just leave them in the comment section below. Especially if it's stuff, you know, some of those, maybe those movements that you haven't done before, kind of like those incline lateral raises or those cable external rotations. If you guys have any questions about uh, technique or form, just leave them below and I'll get back to you. Uh, we have an off day tomorrow and then we'll get back at our next lower A workout the day after that. Have a good workout and I'll see you guys soon. Anyway.